It's one thing for humanoid robots to look impressive in demo videos, dancing, flipping, and lifting weights like futuristic athletes, but it's something else entirely when one suddenly thrashes around like it's been possessed. And that's exactly what happened with a Unitree H1 humanoid robot named d during a test session, and the whole thing was caught on camera. Shared by Rec Robotics's Six Live on social media, the video shows the robot suspended in midair by a crane before it starts flailing uncontrollably, knocking into gear, crashing the crane structure itself, and forcing engineers nearby to take a few urgent steps back. It's chaotic. One person even yells, what the fuck did you guys run? While another, believed to be Rec CTO Amanda Watson, shouts in shock as the robot flings its limbs midair. What the fuck did you guys run? Now, the context behind the clip is important. According to Six, the issue was caused by something quite specific. A full body control policy was activated while the robot's feet weren't in contact with the ground. That instantly triggered instability and caused the robot to spaz out. Basically, it was like hitting the accelerator on a car while it's up on jacks. The system didn't know what to do and things went off the rails. But of course, most people online didn't focus on the technical nuance, they focused on the fact that a powerful humanoid robot just snapped, and it looked straight out of a Terminator sequel. I'll be back. What makes this situation even more intense is that DREC isn't some experimental one-off hidden in a lab. It's based on the Unitree H1, a commercially available humanoid robot that anyone can technically buy. It stands 5.9 feet tall, weighs 104 pounds, and each of its joints can deliver up to 365 pound-feet of torque. That's serious muscle. This machine is designed to run, lift, balance, and even pull off stunts like backflips in the hands of a developer or robotics team. It can do some pretty advanced things, but when something goes wrong, like a glitch or a setup mistake, it has more than enough force to cause real damage. And in that video, it nearly did. Now what's interesting is this isn't an isolated incident. Back in May, another video surfaced from a Chinese testing facility showing what appeared to be the exact same robot model going berserk. In that case, also suspended by a crane, the Unitree robot suddenly started flailing, knocking over a nearby computer and forcing two workers to sprint away. The footage looked like something out of Robocop, and it spread like wildfire online. It turned out the robot had been triggered by a coding fault, and one engineer managed to stop it by repositioning the base it was mounted on. And that still wasn't the end of it. Just a few months earlier, in February, another humanoid robot made headlines during a public festival in China. It was behind a safety barrier surrounded by onlookers when it suddenly lurched forward, startling the crowd. Security quickly stepped in and got the situation under control, but the video raised the same old question again. What happens when these robots act unexpectedly in public spaces? So at this point, we're seeing a pattern. Highly capable humanoid robots are increasingly stepping out of labs and into the real world, and we're also seeing how unpredictable they can be, especially in high-stress test environments. Which brings us to a broader issue. How do we actually define safety? for machines that walk, act, and move like us, but can throw a punch strong enough to break bones if something goes wrong. The team at the Humanoid Hub had something pretty relevant to say about this. They compared it to the early days of automobiles. A hundred years ago, there were 20 deaths per 100 million miles driven in the United States. Today, that number is below 1.5. It's not zero, but it's dramatically better. And the same logic might apply to humanoid robots. We're in the early, unpredictable, sometimes chaotic phase. Robots will malfunction, they'll make mistakes, they'll even be misused. And yet, that shouldn't be a reason to freeze progress entirely. Because the alternative, over-regulating out of fear, could stall innovations that might otherwise save lives, improve care for the elderly, take over hazardous tasks, and make society more efficient overall. What's clear though is that humanoids won't ever be 100% safe. There's no such thing as perfect software or unbreakable hardware. There are too many variables. Software bugs, hardware stress, freak accidents, or just plain human error. But that's not a reason to abandon the idea. 
Instead, it's about figuring out where to draw the line, how safe is safe enough. The key might be building out real-world data, just like we did with cars, planes, and industrial machines. And that's exactly what China seems to be focusing on right now. On July 18th, they officially opened a massive new AI robot training ground in Mianyang, a city in China's Sichuan province. This isn't just another lab, it's a full-scale platform designed to train, test, and refine embodied AI robots in complex, high-intensity scenarios. Think of it as a kind of boot camp for humanoid robots. The entire setup includes research facilities, testing zones, commercialization support, and perhaps most critically, extreme environment simulations. The goal is to tackle the big bottlenecks in the robotic space, lack of quality data, not enough real world feedback loops, and the inability to safely test robots in unpredictable conditions. Because let's face it, Real environments are messy. There's dust, noise, interference, human movement, weird angles, and chaotic schedules. A robot that works perfectly in a silent lab might act very differently on a construction site or in a crowded subway station. According to officials, the training ground will be structured around one main innovation center focused on key technologies like system integration, core algorithm development, and pilot manufacturing. On top of that, there will be two large-scale scenario training bases where robots are tested across various sectors, like emergency response, manufacturing, healthcare, urban services, and even tourism. Basically, they're stress testing robots in ways that go far beyond typical lab routines. And the ambition here is big. By the end of this year, they aim to have at least seven robotics companies working inside the training ground. That number jumps to 30 by 2027, with a plan to launch over 10 new robot products and apply more than 30 advanced technologies across different sectors. All of this is backed by a special fund from the provincial government, with a clear objective to make the training facility a national leader in embodied AI development. There's also a commercial angle to all of this. China's humanoid robotics market is projected to hit 870 billion yuan by 2030. That's over $121 billion. So yes, while some of these robot mishaps look chaotic now, they're part of a much bigger picture. It's not just about fixing bugs, it's about scaling an entire industry. At the heart of it, these robots aren't just for entertainment or research anymore. They're being designed to handle real jobs. Whether that's lifting boxes in a warehouse, performing delicate tasks in hospitals, responding to emergencies, or even engaging in robot versus robot combat like the Rakei team seems to be leaning into. And that opens up new possibilities, new risks, and a massive need for updated safety frameworks that go beyond just code. Because if these humanoids are going to operate alongside us, whether it's walking next to us on sidewalks or working next to us in factories, we need to make sure we know how to handle them when things don't go as planned. And that means better training systems, smarter fail-safes, clearer regulations, and more transparency around what these machines are actually doing. So yeah, a robot flailing on a crane mid-test is terrifying, but it's also a reminder that we're entering a new era, one where these machines aren't science fiction anymore. They're here, they're powerful, and they're learning fast. Thanks for watching. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Hit subscribe if you're into this kind of stuff and catch you in the next one.